A Soulmate Love Guide Chapter 1 Soulmate Love, Everybody's Fantasy Prologue to Soulmate Love I always feel good when I'm around you. We make each other feel good. We were cut from the same cloth. The great classic love story starts off with a nice, young, healthy, pretty, popular girl who gets around the community commuting with her fellow citizens, is well liked and even has lots of guy friends but no one who really sends a lightning bolt to her soul then one day out of the blue, he appears, handsome, tall, sensitive, and slightly shy. They both know instantly they're meant for each other. They fall in love, have a whirlwind courtship, feel inseparable, feel that life had little meaning before they met. He feels like a real man for the first time in life, she feels like a real woman too for the first time ever. They spend as much time as they can together, love each other, get married and live happily ever after in the unending bliss of never-ending love. This is the script that we're all indoctrinated by on a massive scale from the time we're old enough to process rational thoughts and this is the hope and fantasy that virtually every human being in virtually every society on the planet has been conditioned to accept as the definition of happiness in life. I won't judge this because I too am a victim of this brainwashing effect but during my adult years, I've gone beyond it to identify sexual hedonism as one of my keys to happiness which is not to say that I don't dream about this perfect lovey-dovey picture of soulmate love from time to time both with past girlfriends and with mythical girlfriends who I've created in my mind. Over a lifetime, there are only a few people you come across where you share a mutual enthusiasm for your lives that's natural, intuitive, and doesn't have to be forced. Soulmate love is the dream of life for just about everybody and if you don't have it, as many people don't, both married and single, life is reduced to misery or at least a deep feeling of vague emptiness but I've gone beyond this paradigm to live in the moment for other things I enjoy and seem pretty happy without this alleged need for soulmate love but it's still there at the back of my mind. Either God, nature, big brother, or a combination of all three have done a great job of indoctrinating the human race to the formula of seeking out a like-minded mate for a lifetime of happiness. It doesn't matter who created this craving within us but the point is that it's there. I'm sure the biggest playboy, the ugliest nerd, the oldest spinster all dream of perfect soulmate love in their idlest moments. The problem with this unexplainable magnetism is that it's often infatuation, a temporary thrill, a loss of sanity, a short passion then in the extreme light of day a few months later, we see an ordinary human being, not as picture perfect as we once thought. According to the definition of soulmate love, we don't care about anything else. We love everything about the person despite her wrinkles and bald spots. A lot of people crave this feeling so much that they become love and sex junkies seeking new partners all the time in order to get this intense dose of infatuation again and again then when it wears off, they move on to the next lover to repeat the process. How much is romantic love, how much body chemistry, how much is true emotion, how much is cultural brainwash? How many people actually stay together in a monogamous loving relationship over a lifetime with both the hot from the fire initial spray of fireworks then the comfort phase of fitting together like comfortable old shoes? How many people have mutual love with deep passion, intimacy, and long-time friendship as two people who like each other for who they are not just for the romantic part of it? Nobody in the pop culture realm except for the people who write psychobabble love books seems to talk about the hard work and mundanity that goes with a love affair, that sometimes the players don't exactly feel like loving each other but stay together through thick and thin anyway. Another problem with love is that it has to be mutual. We are given the message that if we're attracted to someone, we have to pursue them, because, after all, Life is the pursuit of happiness but this causes so many problems in society, when the pursuer is not loved as much as he loves the object of his affections or when two people marry for the wrong reasons, not true, pure love. Many people are so hungry for this mythical quality of love that they'll often fall in love with the idea of love thereby deluding themselves into thinking that they're really in love then realizing they made a mistake much later. Young people, under 30, should be wary when they fall in love because more often than not, it's a passing fancy, not really love just learning about life. In essence, true love is. Feelings of warmth, pleasure, caring, 
loyalty, tenderness and affection. Feeling vital and happy around each other. Feeling sexually charged around each other. Feeling physiologically aroused around each other. A need to touch and be touched. Two mature, independent people who can make their own way in life but choose to be together because they love each other. Almost never smooth. Virtually everybody has turbulence with one another along the way. The soul in soulmate love slash our souls will be united. The soul in soulmate love means that you first have to find what you really like to do in life to either or both earn you your living and to inspire you to do something worthy for you and to possibly help the world at large. This becomes your standard in life. In order to earn your self-respect every day, you follow your soul which is your personal standard of how you should live and you do it forever. It makes you feel good and keeps you strong, inspired and stable. This article is not about finding your soul but the point is that it is not possible to have a great love affair with someone else unless you love yourself first which means to find your soul and live by it. You can express your own spirit freely but you have very little control in finding love. It's either instinctively there or it isn't. The best way to maximize your chances is to look as happy and healthy as possible to attract a worthy mate. The only way to do that is to live by the free spirit ideology. You can get into relationships for all kinds of reasons but the only pure, loving one is that you instinctively feel strongly attracted to someone right away when you see them for the first time and they feel the same about you. The way you live is written all over you. It doesn't lie. If you fall in love with someone based on this aura you feel about them, that's much purer than getting into a relationship because of someone's image of coolness, monetary worth, family name, or status in their profession or out in the community. Most people do not love themselves enough to try to figure out what their essences are as individual human beings then have the guts to live it out so they'll get what they deserve, a half-assed person like themselves for a mate. They'll work a half-assed job they have no strong passion about just for the money and they'll have a half-assed life not caring about much beyond paying bills, watching TV, buying a few creature comforts and eating good tasting foods. The passionately inspired, aesthetic people strive to live an intense, transcendent lifestyle through the release of the inspired energy that resides in their souls. Because they live like this, they have a greater interest in life than the average person so it necessarily follows that they have a greater interest in pursuing a more glorious type of love which is a soulmate type of love. This is the hook, develop your own soul enough to be a stellar monument to humanity by manifesting the spiritual genetic seed you were born with fully and do the same in your pursuit of love. Find a soulmate, someone who thinks and lives like you and pursue love with the same passion that you pursue your life. Join together then pursue your inspired activities as a team with joy in your heart day after day forever. True soulmates are people who share their love of life together. It's not the typical marriage where they each have defined roles and rarely spend time together except at the supper table. True soulmates actually do things together. They might write together, work out together, run a business together, run a farm together, go for walks together, etc. The more things you do and share with your partner, the more you will feel like soulmates and kindred spirits. Honor your partner as an individual. Help her discover her true essence as a human being then live by it. We're all artists. We have the opportunity to be artists of our own lives. To me, it's the greatest way to live, as an artist of my own life. I felt so strongly about this that I wrote my free spirit book about it but you want to share your unique artistry for life with someone else which is why it's great to be an artist of your own life, find someone trying to be an artist of their lives then meeting up somewhere somehow and building a life together as loving soulmates. Learn from each other, help each other, love each other and enjoy your lives together. The only rule is that you must each be true to yourselves the way you feel in your souls. You must not sacrifice any of the artistry you feel in your soul in order to appease, conform, or please your spouse. You can each be yourselves as full individuals and still meet halfway as soulmates sharing your lives with each other. When you compromise yourself to please your lover, everybody loses. The world is abundant. You can have it all which is to be yourself unfettered and be a part of a glorious soulmate love affair.
it's not that hard if you are honestly true to your code and strive to be an artist of life the way you feel it, meet the right person then make the effort to make it a glorious affair. It all takes effort but when you're inspired, it's not an effort, it's a joy. Never forget. In order to be soulmates, you must constantly share your lives together. If you want true love, follow your free spirit. People still feel lonely, unconnected with other people and society in general even when they're close, intimate and friendly with their families, friends, the church congregation, the local sewing club, school, work, the government, etc. They want a perfect kindred spirit soulmate connection like they saw in movie or it's a utopian vision they have but the real world is made up of real people with constantly changing moods. There is no one perfect moment of love then it's love for life. It's a constant work in progress. We're all individuals with our own egos, emotions, ideas, and agendas. Even when we think we're kind and loving people, most of us except for a few saints, still think about ourselves way more than we think about other people because that's who we are by design. We're stuck in our heads geared for self-preservation and the pursuit of a comfortable life first before we think about anyone else. If you try to tell me that people are mostly kind, good and loving as people have done in the past, I'll just say well then why are there so many poor, hungry, homeless people out there who can't get basic medical service? In your own hometown, there are a few people living in extreme excess while some people have almost nothing. I'm aware of this stuff and not buying into the propaganda about the happy family of humanity united for the common good as the new agers seem to think with their power of intention crap. A lot of people simply don't analyze their lives, realize they're existentially alone like everybody else then accept it and get on with living a great life. They're stuck feeling lonely so they're looking for something to elevate them in the moment. It could be anything from superficial friendship like hanging out at the bar to eating too much. The bottom line is that it's always about you stuck in your own head. You have to create yourself to be proud and inspired about your life. Society tries to exploit people's existential loneliness by offering to sell them frivolous things to fill up their feelings of emptiness but it never works because the true challenge of life is to fill up your sense of existential loneliness by becoming the person your God created you to be. If you want love, this is your best chance of finding it, by being yourself, actively living your life as opposed to trying to manufacture an image about yourself that you got from the capitalist pop culture world or drowning your feelings of loneliness by becoming a self-pitying consumer spectator, always looking for something out there to fill you up for a minute or two. You can only find true love by finding a soulmate or kindred spirit. In order to attract someone who shares your free spirit, you have to be expressing it so that kindred spirits see and come to check you out. If you're just a generic person working some generic, buttoned-up job, you're conforming to some standard not inherent to you. People won't see what's really in your soul so you'll end up marrying another generic person like yourself and never find a true soulmate. It's a great tragedy but nobody ever talks about it. Based on my own observations, easily less than 10% of all married couples are true soulmates in the sense that both love to express the same things in their free spirits therefore they have a primal spiritual bond, cut from the same cloth. We wonder why we're a messed up society. It's not that hard to figure out. It's because we don't listen to our true natures as individuals. We allow ourselves to get seduced and brainwashed by the forces of a mass media capitalist world then when we get all the markers of success and happiness according to societal standards, we realize it still doesn't mean anything. Follow your true nature and you win. Anything else is not a great life. How to culture soulmate love one. Ask what you can do for her instead of what can she do for you. Be sensual, not just sexual. To love is good because love is difficult. For one human being to love another, that is perhaps the most difficult of all tasks, the ultimate, the last test and proof, the work for which all other work is but preparation. Rainer Maria Rilke Soulmate love is your other half, someone who completes you or makes you whole. I was half listening to a movie on the Women's Network while working on this book. There were two movies on, one after the other. 
The first was called After Sunset which came out around the year 1992. The second one was called Before Sunset that came out in 2004. It had the same two actors in it. One who has some popularity is Ethan Hawke. Not only are the films impressive because they are shot with very few cuts. It's like a continuous conversation throughout. It's about these two people who have a short fling as 20-year-olds then they meet again after 12 years. What eventually struck me about them is that in the space of four hours, they do a lifetime of intimate talking. The girl actually makes the following comment. To truly communicate with people is very hard to do. They talk about how most of our contacts with people are made up of superficial conversations and nobody really talks about what they really feel. I generally think most love movies are very corny but I thought these movies were very good because the dialogue was excellent. That's what intimacy is, two people relaxed enough with each other to be themselves. Love is supposed to be two souls sharing their love of life together, spreading their wings, expanding themselves as they live glorious lives but the truth is that most of the population are mundane souls or usually after a short burst of youthful exuberance in their 20s and maybe their early 30s, settle down to become who they really are, dull, mundane people comfortably living in a rut of a predictable job and pop culture entertainment. As such, there's no real spark for the inspiration of life from within themselves so as a crutch, they look to the relationship to fill this void but if the other person is living a great life, he will become contemptuous of the lazy, fat, dependent flake or if they're both like that, it will be lowered expectations as two limited people who secretly have contempt for themselves nevertheless continue on with the charade of living a happy life because it gives them some comfort even if only a limited amount. They accept it and hold onto it because as the weak people they are, it's all they got. Safe relationships are easy. Any two people can get married and live a bland, comfortable life together but a great glorious life is if each of them strive for the limits of their own personal passions in life and come together to unite to explore the deepest recesses of their love and passion for each other by going out and doing things together where they're actually spending a lot of time with each other like maybe going for a long trip together, a long trek in the woods, living on an isolated ranch in the country or Something similar when they're with each other almost all the time unlike the traditional modern day marriage where the guy is off working all day long, she's off doing her thing and they rarely come together to connect. It's easy to play it safe but life wasn't meant to play it safe. It's meant to be lived to its limits in all ways, by yourself and as a couple. How to culture soulmate love too. You can't love another unless you love yourself enough to go for life in all its gusto. Whatever you want more of, you have to be. If you want more strength, you have to be strong. If you want more pleasure, you have to be happy. If you want more love, you have to be loving and extract it out of yourself just like you bring out all your willpower and strength when you're training for a race. Think of love as a potion which mixes two souls into one, each becoming different, better as a team and better in their own way. The final goal is always a shared sense of happiness and pleasure in a smooth, light musical flow like you're perpetually humming a powerful beautiful song to yourself all the time. Even though everybody thinks they're capable of soulmate love and deserve it, most people will not get it in their lives precisely for the fact of the greatest tragedy of life which is that most people let themselves get taken over by the illusions of a capitalist world which destroys their souls, their true essential natures, which makes them duds without the ability to attract nor love another person greatly as the spiritual sensuous experience soulmate love is. Only by being a great spiritually and sensually inspired person can you culture the ability to be a great soulmate lover. The two go hand in hand, a great love of life by yourself is necessary in order to be a great lover to your soulmate. In the Hermann Hesse's story Iris, a young boy Anselm goes from a wondrous free-spirited kid to stuffy professor whereupon he meets a beautiful girl Iris who takes him back to those free-spirited memories of his youth in his mother's Iris garden. When he asks her to marry him, she replies. You offer me flowers yet I can live without flowers and many other things as well. But one thing I cannot and will not do without, I can never live so much as a single day in which the music in my heart is not dominant. If I am to live with a man, 
it must be one whose inner music harmonizes with mine and his single desire must be that his own music be pure. You must know your soul, develop it through soulful pursuits then when you come across a soulmate equal, she will know it's you because she will see the light in your eyes and the beauty in your soul like her and you will be ready for each other so the bottom line is that true great love only comes to a well-developed soul who's great at living his or her own life first. If you're not like this now, you have to rediscover your soul, go back to the pure innocent kid you were a long time ago. Live like that. Throw off the brainwash, go back to your real self and you will eventually get the love you deserve. If you don't, you can still attract a lot of people and develop half-assed relationships but you will never have the real thing until and unless you develop your essential nature to become the person you were meant to be not something that the capitalist world brainwashed you with. Soulmates are two people with the same souls who think alike and love each other. First it has to be that instantaneous lightning bolt connection between the two of you then you have to love each other madly till death do you part and do things together beyond the sex, eating and watching TV bit as already discussed. A family business where the husband and wife work together is a great way to culture your bond then when you have kids, you can bring them into work too and this a great way to raise a family, by doing things together. Many families rarely do things together. They're disparate souls slash lonely ships living in the same house. Soulmate love is the stability of a comfortable silence together. It's not insecurity, fear of your partner, control over your partner, obsession with your partner nor the tit-for-tat game of equitable sharing many couples play. How to Culture Soulmate Love 3 In the game of reciprocal love, the players feel as though each has to expend approximately the same level of energy into the relationship which isn't pure because true love should be a smooth flow unconcerned about where it's been or where it will go. Sometimes you take up the slack, sometimes your partner does. There's no silent game of power where you're comparing yourself to her and feeling you're getting the wrong end of deal. It's not a deal, you're not comparing each other. You're supposedly there because you love each other as is without pretenses involved. Just like you pledge to honor each other in your wedding vows, honor means you love her so much that you want to please her, help her, put her on a pedestal and she feels the love so she gives it back to you out of pure intentions. Your soul is your primal essence, it has a mind of its own, the wisdom you were born with. Follow it in the pursuit of love to meet that soulmate that awakens that strong feeling in you the first time you see her then after that, simply follow your instincts of love which are to love her, cherish her, treat with kindness, nourish her heart, love her passionately, let your true feelings for her come out. Your God gave you all the wisdom to be a great lover when you were born. It's inside of you. You just have to be free enough to let it out, shower your affections on her without being repressed about it as you were conditioned to be. As a boy growing into a man, you were told to keep it all in, keep a stiff upper life, never show your true emotions that might betray you as a weak, sissified person and that means in the arena of love too. For men to open up and share their soppy feelings of love is to show weakness, that you're dependent on another person. The true spirit of man as defined by the cultural ideals of toughness is the lone wolf who goes to battle alone, slays his dragons as the good warrior doing his job then suffers alone when he gets a battle wound. This is not bad, it helps make us tough guys but women are all about a visible show of support and passion. They were raised on Prince Charming stories of guys who loved them deeply and proclaimed it loudly with a show of emotion. This is what your girl wants all the time. At the most basic level, humans and animals crave a bond with others as strong as the maternal infant bond they had as kids when they were cared for by their parents. This is the goal soulmate lovers are shooting for, to know you want deep love, choose to go for it then stay stuck together as thick as glue once you find it, to reach for an easy breezy, hazy lazy warm intimate loving feeling between the two of you. In order to culture soulmate love, your intention has to be pure and your expect ions must be very low, so low that you don't bother with them because you're enlightened enough to know that you will accept the journey together as two souls trying to find happiness in life day by day by working as a team. Once you reach this level of maturity if ever, you won't get depressed when unrealistic expectations don't come to pass. 
you create a life together every day not live in some delusion of a far off place where all is perfect which you think you will reach if you follow a prescribed plan which never works because life is lived in the moment, to enjoy the journey all the time as you quietly work on whatever it is you want out of life. Your expectations and those of your lover will most certainly be different to some extent. Protect your marriage by making allowances for these differences and giving your partner the space to live his or her own live. Soulmate love is two souls in one who feel it, know it, and live in harmony with each other in a comfortable atmosphere. Just like the soul is its own place, so too is soulmate love its own place. It's not a compartmentalized thing like the capitalist world wants, filling in your schedule with two blocks of time for romantic encounters per week or whatever but life doesn't work like this. It should be a smooth flow in your soul and in your love life, initiating amorous passions whenever they happen. Great lovers are all expressive, spontaneous, passionate people. Girls like these kind of guys to express all their loving energies onto one girl, their soulmates so the point is listen to your heart. Go with it regardless of how corny it might seem. When you're down and out, go with the flow in your soul to ride out the storm to help you stay calm, loving and inspired enough to not take it out on yourself nor get depressed enough such that you take out your anger on your spouse which many people do since she's the most convenient one who will take it because you know she loves you and won't do anything about it. If you take your frustrations out on her, it's abuse, crossing the lane, taking advantage of her good nature. You will destroy the relationship. The karma will be all off and come back to haunt you in one way or another either through guilt or in a destroyed marriage where the wife will finally get wise enough to cast you off. I analyzed my relationships with past girlfriends to try to get down to the soul of a girl and what I found was basically that I feel fine in my freewheeling state doing what I want with her living in the same house but when it seems like I'm in my own bubble, going out doing my thing then coming home and poking my nose into the computer for many hours, she feels neglected takes it personally, thinks I don't love her as much, maybe have a problem with her or maybe I'm getting cold and callous. So apart from general small talk, you have to talk to a girl face to face focusing all your attention on her at least once every two days even if just for five minutes about anything in general. You need this to bring her back into the fold feeling reassured that you love her and are showing her you care. This is how women operate. She needs a visible show of support in order to feel like you're loving her lately whereas for men, we don't really concern ourselves with momentary emotions all that much. We get married and assume it's for life, case closed. She needs a show of emotion every day. I assume she knows I love her which is wrong because you have to prove it to her with words and actions all the time. See your partner as they really are not just as a fantasy figure. Reveal your inner feelings to your lover. You can achieve lasting passion by Being affectionate Touching non-sexually Talk, say nice things Take care of yourself to look attractive Have deep, long conversations Be a good listener Give your spouse at least 5 minutes of undivided attention when you meet at the end of the day Do small favors Buy small gifts Help out without being asked Hug more. Don't read your spouse's mind and assumes he doesn't love you anymore. It's probably your imagination getting the better of you. If you want romance, be romantic. Be comforting. Chapter 2 Soulmate love is part fantasy and part commitment. Love is being heard and understood with loyal long-term commitment. True love leads to commitment a little bit at a time. You meet someone. Sparks fly. It feels hot for six months then it dies down slash. Then what? That's when the real relationship starts should you decide to stay. State your love for her all the time. Go out at least once a week even if just for a meal out. Tell her you miss her when you're apart. Be monogamous in deed and spirit. Make future plans together. Marry, live with each other and spend a lot of time together. Sleep together almost every night. Like being in the relationship. Go on vacation together. Give her gifts. Meet each other's families. Discuss money like will you share bills, joint bank account, 
put the lease in both names, etc. You have to think in the way that would happen if you split. If you buy the big screen TV, keep the credit card receipt that shows you paid for it. I've seen a lot on reality cop shows. The guy says he wants his big screen TV. The chick says no. The cop says look at it as a life experience. If you want your couch and stuff later, keep your receipts even for the dog. Discuss whether to have have children or not. Acquire furniture and stuff together. Make a lifelong commitment to each other. Protect your relationship by standing hand in hand together, forevermore. Act as husband and wife in the world. Once you commit, ignore the naysayings of friends and family. People are jealous. Women especially get jealous if her friend finds love and she doesn't. Even guys get jealous if a buddy couples up. Everyone's family can be extremely judgmental. That's why the Bible says leave your family and be loyal to your spouse. You can't make a crazy relationship work but you can strengthen a normal one or know when it's coming off the track. Keep trust and rapport going all the time. What creates the in love feeling? How do you keep it going? No one's perfect. My pets do stupid things. I don't throw them under the bus for it. I still love them because I know they love me. That's the test, do you feel she loves you? If the relationship is stagnant, stay or go. Don't be wishy-washy. Relationships develop a little bit at a time. Avoid fights. Spice up your love life. What happens when you stop thinking obsessively about the other person? At that point in time, you commit to spending time and money on her because she's worth it. Be generous. See how good she is to you. True love leads to commitment. What happens when the novelty of love hormones wears off? Will there be a deep bond, shared experiences, cute habits, and love triggers? Build your relationship history. Do things together. Dance together. Go out together. Say, I love you. The Mythical Soulmate Info Most of us want starry-eyed romance, walking along a beach to a glorious sunset pledging undying love to our mythical soulmate, a beautiful man or a pure goddess forever. This is mostly a fantasy but some people find a mythical soulmate, usually when you're young and one of the first few times you fall in love. Your mythical soulmate only comes around a few times in your life. As you age, you get uglier, fatter, and more cranky so if it's gonna happen, chances are you got until you're about 30, 50 for men. Twin Flame, the new new age soulmate term. Somebody created the term Twin Flame to sell their book about Twin Flames. You can have all kind of soulmates but a twin mate is supposedly deeper. The gods assign you one Twin Flame in life when you're born. That's it. According to the Talmud, Rav Yehuda said that 40 days before a male child is conceived, a voice from heaven announces whose daughter he is going to marry. In Yiddish, this is called Bashurd, a word meaning fate or destiny. You intuitively know when you come across someone cut from the same cloth. There is nothing divine about it. Soulmate website slash deep love websites. 123 greetings.com slash love slash new underscore love slash I underscore can underscore see underscore deep underscore into underscore your underscore soul dot html. 1st dash spot dot net slash topic underscore marriage dot html. Aliski smd dot wordpress dot com slash 2013 slash 04 slash 18 slash love hyphen deep hyphen in hyphen the hyphen soul. Associatedcontent.com slash article slash 24257 6 slash secrets underscore to underscore finding underscore your underscore lifetime underscore soulmate dot html. Best dash love dash poems dot com. Bulletinkisa.com slash article slash 150981 underscore is hyphen it hyphen possible hyphen for hyphen and hyphen atheist hyphen to hyphen have hyphen a hyphen soulmate. DearCupid.org slash question slash our hyphen soulmates hyphen destined hyphen to hyphen be hyphen together hyphen how hyphen do dot html. DeeperSoul.blogspot.com slash 2012 slash 09 slash take hyphen me hyphen to hyphen my hyphen love dot html. DeepQuotes.net
deepundergroundpoetry.com slash poem slash 3933 driftwoodramblings.blogspot.com slash 2011 slash 05 slash deep hyphen pools hyphen of hyphen pure hyphen love the hyphen eyes hyphen of dot html edgarcasey.org slash about underscore edgarcasey slash soulmate slash soulmate dot asp free dash ebook dash online dot com slash soul underscore deep underscore love underscore letter dot html goal dash setting dash college dot com slash goal hyphen setting slash how hyphen to hyphen find hyphen your hyphen soul hyphen mate hyphen in hyphen a hyphen year hyphen or hyphen less hyphen part hyphen two ideleehearts.com slash may hyphen you hyphen feel hyphen deep hyphen love hyphen within hyphen your hyphen heart hyphen mind hyphen body hyphen and hyphen soul slash 20924 love dash poems dash etc dot com slash deep hyphen romantic hyphen love hyphen poems dot html love dash poems dash etc dot com slash soul hyphen mate hyphen love hyphen poems dot html married and flirting chat dot com MyDearValentine.com slash love slash poem slash deep dot html Selfgrowth.com slash article slash the hyphen first hyphen step hyphen to hyphen magnetizing hyphen the hyphen deep hyphen soul hyphen mate hyphen love hyphen and hyphen connection hyphen we hyphen yearn hyphen for short dash love dash poem dot com SoulmateKit.com SoulmateOracle.com SoulmateRelationships.com slash relationships Soulmating.com Wiki.answers.com slash q slash how underscore do underscore you underscore no underscore if underscore you underscore were underscore meant underscore to underscore be underscore with underscore someone YouTube.com Soulmate love, deep love Relationship and communication websites CounselingConnection.com slash WP hyphen content slash upload slash 2013 slash 08 slash relationship hyphen breakdown dot PDF, coping with relationship breakdown, a life effectiveness guide. CounselingConnection.com slash WP hyphen content slash upload slash 2013 slash 08 slash coping hyphen with hyphen infidelity dot PDF, coping with infidelity, a life effectiveness guide. Partnership-academy.net Hopecouples.com IBR.tcu.edu slash manual slash data r hyphen interventions, time out. For me, an assertiveness and sexuality workshop for women. IBR.tcu.edu slash manual slash data r hyphen interventions, time out. For men, a communication skills and sexuality workshop for men. Joinonelove.org Mentalhealth.org.uk slash publication slash guide hyphen investing hyphen your hyphen relationships, guide to investing in your relationships. Newconversations.net slash 7challenges.pdf, the 7 challenges workbook, cooperative communication skills for success at home and at work. Return to intimacy.com static one dot squarespace.com slash static slash five five c zero bd four two e four b zero c b f f nine seven seven three one seven one f slash t slash five a one a three f four b four nine six six b one three four two e b f five c seven slash one five one one six six nine five seven nine eight six seven slash underscore plus sign boundary plus sign starter plus sign kit plus sign no plus sign two zero one seven dot pdf boundary starter kit static one dot squarespace dot com slash static slash five five c zero b d four two e four b zero c b f f nine seven seven three one seven one f slash t slash five nine one d one five a c f seven e zero of four eight f d seven seven e four a four slash one four nine five zero seven eight three one eight two zero eight slash breakup plus sign recovery plus sign kit plus sign two zero one seven dot p d f breakup recovery kit chapter three a Soulmate One-Liner Guide The Best Soulmate One-Liners He fights for me. I'm worth it to him. He makes me feel at ease. He loves me for me. We belong together. We locked eyes and that was it. I want to be overwhelmed by her. I need you. I want to empty myself into you. I want to reveal myself to you completely. 
I want to experience you completely. I want to be inside of you. I don't want to live without you. You have to keep recreating the passion. If you're not happy in the relationship, you have to actively improve it. You have to think about it, organize it, and plan it. Soulmate One-Liners 1 A relationship that lasts a lifetime doesn't always look like walks on the beach and gazing lovingly into each other's eyes. It's about time spent together. A good relationship is about communication. Appreciate the person you love several times a day. Balance your needs with the needs of the family. Be patient. Be a close, supportive friend. Be courteous. Be physically affectionate. Connect with your family and friends. Create positive, affectionate, caring, fun interactions. Decide what means the most to you both as a couple like to grow old together, have kids, travel, etc. We assume our spouse has the same goals in mind as we do but nobody can read minds. Dedicate time to your spouse. Disagree without putting your marriage in danger. Displaying affection keeps a woman in love. Hug her every day. When you show affection to a woman, it takes care of everything. Do things together. Do something like take dance lessons together. Do not allow the conflicts to kill the relationship. Try not to use criticism, contempt, stonewalling or defensiveness. Does your partner know how you feel? Talk and listen. Don't get angry then withdraw. Couples begin a downward spiral until the relationship falls apart. Don't go to bed angry. Eat healthy for better sex. If you want to have a better relationship, take care of yourself. Eating together can make you both feel connected. Good food can heal tension. Food represents shared vulnerability. Sit across from one another and break bread. Enjoy life together. Laugh together. Every morning, you plant the seeds for the day, be nice and even romantic to your spouse. Go out on dates. Take turns leading your dates. Good sex is only a part of a good relationship but bad sex or no sex can ruin it. Have fun with each other. Hold hands. It's easy to feel disconnected and underappreciated if your partner does not treat you as special. Keep good hygiene. Wear nice clothes. Keep the in-laws at a safe distance. Keep things simple. Let go of your pride. Out of pride we refuse to tell the other person that we love them or are going through hard times. Live every day as if it was your last year together. Look into each other's eyes. Love each other. Make time for love. Make small talk. Make your love feel like they are special and loved. Make sex dates. Make your spouse feel special. Many married women feel lonely. They feel unappreciated. Many couples do not have time for each other. Society values money, job skills, and education more than it values marriage. Marriage is either passive or an active mutual adventure. If you have a conflict, it is very easy to ignore it. Most women say they want someone to talk to who values their opinions and makes them feel desirable. Pay attention to your spouse. People capable of loving with intensity deserve love. People desire to have a relationship where they can feel loved and share their love. Reach out to your loved one when they are going through hard times. Be there for her. Reconnect after an argument. Relax and unwind together. Take a couple minutes at the end of each day to talk about your lives. Say I love you. Say you make me very happy. Say I love you every day to your spouse. Set common money goals. Share yourself openly. Share common interests. Share your lives. Shop for groceries together. Shut the TV off. Focus on each other. Some couples keep a family website or a blog. Spend time together as companions. Take your spouse out on a date at least once every two weeks. The marriage should at least be equally important as the kids. To be loved is to be recognized by the other. You can't take your partner for granted. Treat your partner as your best friend. Respect her as an individual. 
when you're in a bad mood, that's when you most have to feel loving towards your partner. Women often feel as if they have to do everything at home. Help with the housework. If the woman works then both should do half the housework. Women want to feel that we're in this together. Work on increasing daily positive interactions. You should each have free time away from each other. Your hearts beat as one is spiritual love. Soulmate one-liners too. Soulmates are people who are very similar in disposition and sensitivity. In love, it's two people who are meant for each other in a special way as if they are spiritually connected. A soulmate is someone who lights your fire. A good couple does not feel trapped in the relationship. A great relationship creates a sanctuary. Appreciate your mate's different points of view. Being out in nature or living in the midst of it helps a couple see each other as they are away from society's distractions. Both have a high level of mutual respect. Darson Wang, Stationary Front We are primal by instinct but we can rise above it with deep love for each other. Be more like the opposite gender. Lay beside each other. Enjoy each other's company in peace. Do not do hurtful things to each other. Sex is primal. We have to add control and love to it. What is noble and beautiful for the relationship? Respect the marriage. Revel in the glories of love. Hug her and cover her in kisses. Cherish the love. Love each other with the deepest reverence and affection. Be a strong friend. Loving people don't nitpick about little things. There must be self-control in marriage. You have to control your wild free desires. You can't be an animal. You have to be a lover. Each must give fully and generously to the other. Each must have an individual sense of integrity. Great couples are more than the two of them alone. They are enriched by each other. Hard times can make a relationship stronger. I knew from the first time I saw her or him, he slash she was the only one. I'm not interested in anyone else. Dress well. Be clean around the house. Buy her a book about her favorite subject. Buy a birthday gift. Take her out. Always show her you love her. Fill up her gas tank. Buy groceries. Keep promises. Don't forget when she asks you to do a minor errand. Write it down. Focus on your love together. He's more like me than anyone I've ever met. I want someone walking with me through a sea of grass who would point out a little mimosa flower in the distance which I was going to point out to him. Love itself does not guarantee an easy life. There are lots of life problems like money, medical problems, in-laws, etc. Love can heal life problems. Never lonely, never sad, never yearning, never wondering, eternally romantic. No one in this world can make you happier than being in love with your soulmate. I did an internet survey where I asked the question, how do you feel when you're in deep, passionate love? The following few statements are the commonalities I pulled from all the responses I got as to what it feels like to be in love. He gets me. He understands me. I think about him or her in endearing terms a lot. I want to be with him or her rather than anyone else on the planet. I'm heavily attracted to him or her. I want him or her to love me and show it. He or she turns me on sexually. I want to do things to make him or her happy. I want him or her to know everything about me and I want to know everything about him or her. I get down when he or she is not as loving as I think they should be. I get jealous if I see him or her flirting with someone else. Follow your heart over your head when it comes to love. Let's get married. Everything starts with love. We were made for each other. Take me now, here. No matter what happens, they will never split up. Some qualities of outstanding relationships are commitment, vulnerability, humility, integrity, honesty, and generosity. Soulmates see the relationships as a way to mutually improve their lives together. Soulmates shares their lives together. Stress doesn't break up couples. Not enough love does. The love that I have for her keeps getting stronger. The heart provides guidance in love. 
They don't overdo the dependency bit. They make each other feel good. They do special, nice things within normal, everyday living. They give each other space to do their own thing. They openly show love and affection. They talk regularly. They don't try to control or change the other. They do not hold grudges. They solve their problems quickly. They are loyal. They value each other's individuality by backing off and letting them pursue their interests. They find ideas and ways to enhance the relationship. They enjoy each other's company. They share the good things but try not to share their problems unless they're obvious like a heart attack. They enjoy the love. They like to make the other happy. They help each other. They know how to solve fights and arguments. They don't blame the other. They take responsibility when they screw up. They're always trying for a better relationship. We both have our own views and we feel free to express them. We face challenges together. We learn from them. We have a regular sex life but it's more about a spiritual connection. We use the differences in our personalities as assets and strengths in the relationship. We're together because we want to be. What's the good of a man unless you can see a bit of a god in him, what's the good of a woman unless there's a glimpse of a goddess in her? D.H. Lawrence. A soulmate is a true companion who understands you and you understand them. Why do you love her, I feel drawn to her. Why? Because she has a nice, pure, feminine heart. You must be passionately in love with each other.